James Lund is James the Wine Guy. Stay tuned for this Rosé O'Clock. So what I've done in the past is I've actually had my wine o'clock video and I think it's important to back it up because sometimes when I'm tweeting out, I want to give some content and video content on rosé o'clock. It to me is important to do and uh, I think it's really, you know, getting that emotion right. If I just say rosé o'clock, eh, it's kind of, you know, yeah, I see what you're saying. As opposed to, oh, there's a video behind it. And I think that's a really great way of just bringing home dry rosé movement. I have one European wine right here and uh, from Italy, and uh, it's a really unique blend. This is uh, Nero Davola, Merlot, Negro Amaro, and Monte Pacciano. So, so this is a unique Italian rosé. This is Nero Davola, this is Negro Amaro, this is Monte Pacciano, and Merlot. This wine right here, Ruby Ruby, is a Pinot Noir. Uh, it's a fantastic movement, and I think rosé o'clock is important to talk about. Uh, we live in the best of wine times, and rosés have gotten better, especially in the U.S. And the dry expression is much more impactful and much more memorable and something you'll go back to. Yes, I know that there is sweet uh, pink wines out there. Go to any Costco throughout the U.S. and see pallets full of white Zinfandel, unfortunately. But I think that's going to go away at some point. Uh, you know, as I always say, Costco has it because it sells. I think ultimately that tradition or that uh, movement, that's a better way of saying that, is going away. People are really seeking dryness because ultimately you get some sweetness that is inherent in some of these great varieties in terms of its rosé stylization. So stay tuned for more and uh, happy rosé pop to you. I'm on most social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, Google+, LinkedIn, and stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for watching and salut.